In today's Top 10's video, we're looking at the top 10 magical facts you didn't know about Harry Potter. Number 10. Ivana Lynch beat anorexia but wasn't guaranteed the role of Luna Lovegood because of it. The story that originally made the rounds was that Ivana Lynch was dying of anorexia and wrote to J.K. Rowling, begging her for a part in the Harry Potter movies. Rowling then apparently agreed on the condition that Lynch got better. Not so. Ivana Lynch was just an average 11-year-old girl from Ireland who was doing inpatient therapy for anorexia. She also happened to be a massive Harry Potter fan. She wrote to Rowling, expressing her fondness for the author, and to her surprise, Rowling responded every time. She told Rowling about her disease, and the author encouraged her to beat it, but the role of Luna Lovegood was never mentioned in the letters. Lynch recovered at the age of 14. She found out that auditions were being held in London from a fan website and begged her father to take her. It happened in such a short space of time that I didn't even get to tell her, Lynch said. The producers told her, Rowling, because they just mentioned the names of people. She was really shocked. Number 9. Alan Rickman didn't really know all about Snape's secret from the beginning. It's been rumored that before the producers, directors, cast, or any of the crew knew, there was only J.K. Rowling and Alan Rickman. You know what we're talking about. The secret that unraveled Severus Snape. The fact that he was a good guy pretending to be a bad guy, pretending to be a good guy, or something like that. Truth is, though, that the only one who truly knew from the beginning was J.K. Rowling. Not true. I don't know who thinks that is true, but it's not true, Rickman said. She only gave me one tiny little left-of-field piece of information that helped me think that he was more complicated and that the story was not going to be as straight down the line as everybody thought. Rowling thought that it was important that Rickman knew Snape was going to be a very important character later on, but she never mentioned him being a double agent. Strangely enough, Rowling has never mentioned anything on the matter in any interviews, leaving it to Rickman to answer any questions on Severus Snape. So, was Snape's secret planned from the beginning, or was it just a fluke? I suppose we'll have to wait for Rowling to let us know through Pottermore. Number 8. Dame Maggie Smith underwent chemotherapy for breast cancer during the last movies. Can you imagine the Harry Potter series without the great Professor McGonagall? Dame Maggie Smith embodied the strict but sensible professor through ten years of filming, and honestly, we couldn't imagine anyone better suited for the role, but it almost happened when Smith was diagnosed with breast cancer. When Half-Blood Prince and Deathly Hallows Part 1 and 2 were being filmed, she underwent treatment and staggered through the final scenes. You feel horribly sick. I was holding onto railings, thinking, I can't do this, she said in an interview back in 2009, and thankfully, she has made a full recovery since then. My energy is coming back. Shit happens. I ought to pull myself together a bit. That a girl, Maggie. Number 7. Daniel Radcliffe's stunt double was left paralyzed after a flying scene that went horribly wrong in Deathly Hallows. From 2001, David Holmes had been Daniel Radcliffe's, the actor that plays Harry Potter's stunt double. He took on fake dragons, ill-tempered trees, and massive spiders, only to meet his match while rehearsing a flying scene for Deathly Hallows, when an explosion sent him hurling straight into a wall. Holmes broke his neck, which left him paralyzed for life. The horrific accident happened in January 2009 at the Warner Brothers Studios in Levenston. I hit the wall and then landed on the crash mat underneath, said Holmes in an interview with the Daily Mirror in March 2014. My stunt coordinator grabbed my hand and said, squeeze my fingers. I could move my arm to grab his hands, but couldn't squeeze his fingers. I looked into his eyes, and that's when I realized what had happened was major. I remember slipping in and out of consciousness because of the pain levels. I'd broken a bone before, so recognizing that weird feeling across my whole body, from my fingertips right down to my toes, I knew I'd really done some damage. Number 6. Harry Potter and Voldemort turned out to be blood relatives. There's been a lot of debate surrounding the Peverell brothers and their family heirlooms among Potter fans. Harry received the invisibility cloak from Albus Dumbledore only because he kept it for him after James Potter, Harry's father, died. The cloak was passed down from generation to generation since Ignotus Peverell, one of the brothers from the tale of the three brothers, was said to have gotten it from death himself. On the contrary, Voldemort used the Resurrection Stone to make his ring Horcrux, and the books say that it had been passed down in his family as well. Does this mean Harry and Tom Riddle have been blood-related all this time? Some fans say it's obvious and that all pure bloods in the Wizarding Universe are related in some way, sort of like royals. Others strongly refuse to believe it. Whatever the case may be, we really doubt that Harry felt bad for killing his cousin 50 times removed. Number 5. There's a hotel in London with Hogwarts-themed wizard chambers. 
The Georgian House Hotel in central London is a beautiful and luxurious retreat that was built in 1851, and although all of its rooms and apartments are remarkable, none of them hold a candle to the wizard chambers. It comes with potion bottles, cauldrons, four-poster beds, and various wizard decor that makes the room feel as if you've just come from a dinner in the Great Hall. The site offers various tours a muggle can take to educate themselves on the wizarding world, but for the room being £209 for two people a night, it sure doesn't come cheap. Number 4. J.K. Rowling hid a lot of plot details that were later revealed If there's one thing that was safe to assume, it would be that J.K. Rowling loves her riddles. Hmm, is that why her antagonist's real name is Tom Riddle? Well, it sure seems like she's quite the Riddler, if you look at all the puzzles hidden in the pages of the Harry Potter series. Remember how Tom Marvello Riddle became an anagram for Voldemort? Well, that was just a small taste of it. In the Order of the Phoenix, after Harry and Dudley were attacked by Dementors, they returned home to an angry Uncle Dursley. When Harry mentions that they were attacked by Dementors, Uncle Dursley demands to know what they are, only to have Aunt Petunia tell him, absentmindedly of course, that they guard the wizard prison as Caban. An astonished Harry then asks her how she knew about them, and she responded with, I heard that awful boy telling her about them years ago. Obviously, Harry assumed she had meant his father James, but we learn in Deathly Hallows that the awful boy that Aunt Petunia was referring to was Severus Snape, and that's just one conundrum out of numerous others. Number 3. The First Wizarding War was at the same time as World War II, and Voldemort was influenced by Hitler. Many writers are influenced by history, culture, and literature, and Rowling was no exception to this rule. She based the story of the First Wizarding War greatly on that of Nazi Germany in the Second World War, and also centered it on that time. I wanted Harry to leave our world and find exactly the same problem in the wizarding world," she said in an interview. So you have the intent to impose a hierarchy, you have bigotry, and this notion of purity, which is this great fallacy, but it crops up all over the world. People like to think of themselves as superior, and that if they can pride themselves in nothing else, they can pride themselves on perceived purity. So yeah, that follows a parallel to Nazism. Voldemort's life and likeness was also greatly influenced by Hitler and his dictatorship. Although the two are different in their own ways, their hunger for power and distaste for anyone different from them still remains the same. Number 2. 17 Actors Who Worked on the Harry Potter Movies Have Died A staggering amount of actors and actresses have died since appearing in Harry Potter. From David Ryle, who played Elphias Doge in Deathly Hallows, to Sir Richardson John Harris, who played the first Albus Dumbledore before his unexpected death in 2002. It's true that the films are filled with people of an older generation, but even a few younger cast members have had an untimely death. Take Dave Legendo, who played Fenrir Greyback, for example, who died at the age of 51 because of heart-related issues. An even younger actor, Robert Knox, who portrayed Marcus Belby, died at the tender age of 18 when he was stabbed to death outside a bar when he was defending his little brother. Others include Timmy Bateson, who voiced Creature, the house elf, Richard Griffiths, who played Vernon Dudley, and Rick Mayall, who played Peeves the Poltergeist, but whose scenes were cut from the finished film. 1. J.K. Rowling regrets Hermione ending up with Ron instead of Harry and nearly killing Ron off. It seems that J.K. Rowling had no love lost for poor Ron Weasley at times. She admitted that she may have got it wrong to pair him and the beautiful Hermione Granger up in the end when it was obvious that Hermione should have ended up with Harry Potter instead. I wrote the Hermione-Ron relationship as a form of wish fulfillment, she said. That's how it was conceived, really, for reasons that have very little to do with literature and far more to do with me clinging to the plot as I first imagined it, Hermione ended up with Ron. She believed that Ron would never really be able to make Hermione happy, and Emma Watson, who played Hermione, agrees. Not only that, Rowling once considered offing poor Ron altogether. Funnily enough, I planned from the start that none of them would die. Then, midway through, which I think is a reflection of the fact that I wasn't in a very happy place, I started thinking I might polish one of them off, out of sheer spite. Luckily enough, Ron didn't end up at the wrong end of Rowling's pen, unlike Dumbledore, Dobby, or Hedwig. So I really hope you enjoyed that video, and I'd love to know what you think of it, so please leave a comment below. I'm also going to link over to another video that you might enjoy, so just click on that thumbnail on the screen now. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, because we put out a new video seven days a week, and you can also visit us online. Just go to top10s.net. Thanks for watching.